Welcome to another round of my little Get Out Demo series. Today is not only a wonderful summer day in Germany, so here's a stark warning for you. <clears throat> Summers in Germany are something. Uh, it's very hot and um, this year it was even hotter <laughs> and uh, two days it, it is also humid so <clears throat> if you hear something in the background <whistles> that's the air conditioning without air conditioning I would sweat directly on your face a very unpleasant uh, experience so excuse me for that um, today I don't want to demo a guitar while I have a very nice guitar here in my hands uh, today I'm coming back to uh, very frequent uh, questions and requests from people in the comment section here or somewhere else on the internet. I'm frequently asked, how do you get your personal guitar sound? And that's a very good question because everybody has its own personality, everybody has preferences uh, apart from playing um, from the playing style. So preferences when it comes to amplifiers, when it comes to, to effects or whatever. So I can say my guitar sound developed over uh, many years and um, basically it's, it's, it's very simple. Um, my sound consists of three main ingredients and these are first a tube amplifier. I more or less only play tube amplifiers. And the second is a delay effect, so an echo delay. That's a very important part of my personal sound. And um, I feel uncomfortable with this very dry sound approach. You know, people are different. That's my style. And the third ingredient, and that's the main star for today, is a very a tiny little stump box. And it's a chorus. I have here a boss. A chorus Ensemble CE5 is the correct model name. This one here, I don't remember exactly. It's it's older. It's uh, more than 15 years old. Um, but I don't think it's one of these first ones. You know, they started like 1995 with these CE5s. But there are many uh, chorus manufacturers out there. And the principle for those who don't know a chorus, what is a chorus? What is a chorus doing? A chorus um, processes um, the guitar signal and adds a second signal on top of it and that's a delayed signal but with very very short um, delay time. Most of the time it's in between of 5 to, to let's say 40 milliseconds uh, to the maximum. And this delayed signal is um, modulated in pitch um, by an oscillation circuit. So the pitch goes up, the pitch goes down. And um, depending on the intensity of this modulation, um, your guitar sound starts to yeah, <laughs> unfold a, a, a thickness and um, also a, yeah, a simply a wonderful effect. Um, Enough said, I'll give you some examples. First here, <clears throat> the setup now is uh, I'm using only one amplifier. Uh, in this case, it's a using Kettner Tube Meister 36. Here's my guitar and the guitar goes directly into the chorus input and from the chorus output directly into my amplifier. So from the guitar into the chorus, from the chorus into the input of the guitar amplifier. Sounds like that, first try. <laughs> Switch the chorus on. Uh -huh. To give you an idea for the intense effect possible, so I just adjust a little bit, put the rate up, the modulation rate, and the depth of the chorus. Wait. reacts different to the frequencies delivered so I use the bridge pickup now for my for more high frequencies included sounds extreme but some of you will may have recognized this typical sound from older records it's an effect which was very popular popular in the yeah early 80s um, in this 
intensity, you know. Uh, I don't want to name now uh, names, copyright, copyright. I don't say the names from the dudes, but you know what I mean. And <clears throat> of course you can experiment with the chorus, especially this model here. Not every chorus is the same. This, this CE5 here has the advantage that it has a low and a high cut filter because uh, I will also talk later a little bit about that. You have to be careful with bass um, when a chorus is involved. From my experience, it, it's it's becoming very muddy very quick if you do not control the low frequencies. And this is especially true if you use the chorus not in a effects send loop. Something I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend from my own experience because a chorus in a effects loop. Yeah, I don't know how to describe it. It it, it, it takes away energy. It's, uh, it's of course useful for other people, but not for me. I never use a chorus in an effects and, and loop configuration. I always use it directly into the amp. But I'm telling in a few moments a little, a little bit more, because I have more than one amplifier here. The keyword here is stereo setup. But before I come to that, um, Mm, I think many guitar players try a chorus, have it in front of the amplifier, so directly, you know, guitar into the chorus, into the amplifier, clean, everything is okay, but when they switch over to a distorted sound, they uh, hear something which is not too, too nice, and I give you an example for that, so now I go to the crunch channel of my amplifier here, use some distortion. First without chorus. Now with chorus. Maybe you heard the distorted sound is becoming muddy, it's becoming, yeah, uh, uh, uncontrollable. Uh, it's not too nice, this sound. Uh, it's not a sound you want to, to play for a long time. Now I switch the chorus into the more extreme, the faster modulation mode. <laughs> You get the picture. Think about early 80s. You know the name of that guitar player. So there are situations where you want to have this aggressive chorus tone, you know, with this breaking up uh, sound. Can be very useful, but not all the time. And it has to be said, you don't get this specific sound by using the effects loop for your chorus, because the, the chorus then is, uh, it's, it's too tamed, you know. But now we come to um, how I typically set up a chorus. And yeah, in most of the cases, I use a stereo setup. I have two amplifiers. Here in this case, I have two. I have one tube meister here. I have the other, other tube meister here. Uh, meanwhile, I have rewired everything. So how that works is um, the chorus has a mono input and uh, it has a stereo output. But it's not a stereo output as you would assume. Uh, it has two outputs, A and B. And the way these stump boxes work is, at least this model here, is A delivers only the chorus, the modulated signal, and B delivers the dry signal. So I have two amplifiers. One amplifier here, the, the, the one here is dry, and the other amplifier has all the chorus modulation and not the normal guitar sound. And this makes a huge difference. So now I have switched on both amplifiers and the chorus is off, so you hear both amplifiers dry with this guitar. Now the chorus is on. Sorry, I 
didn't play exactly the same. I'm always improvising when I'm playing, so it can always be a little bit different. But you get the picture. How was that? You have now the impression that the guitar is very wide. It's a bit tamed, but it's not over tamed, like when it's in an FX loop. And you have the advantage that all of your attack comes over with a dry amp. It's there. And um, now, nah, then you can experiment with the yeah, setup of the second amp. Because you can control the overall behavior of the chorus now with one amplifier. You have here um, yeah, bass, middle, treble. You have not only the controls on the chorus, you have also the controls on the amplifier. And that's what I'm doing. <clears throat> I carefully set up my chorus amplifier in a way where it reacts to my taste. I cannot describe this now on camera. Everybody has to experiment a little bit uh, for themselves. Uh, it's very rewarding, I, I can tell you, to experiment with a stereo setup. Not everybody has two amplifiers, of course. To give you at least <clears throat> a little idea how different I have set up the amplifiers for the chorus, now only the chorus amplifier So you heard two things. First thing you heard that uh, yeah, the modulation goes up and down because it's only the modulated signal. It's wow, 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 wow. Okay, so you understand a little bit better, especially when you are new to guitar effects and guitar playing, what a chorus is actually doing. And the second is um, you heard that this chorus amplifier I have set up in yeah, very thin, you know, nearly without bass. The dry amplifier has the low mid-range and the bass. When chorus is involved with too much bass, uh, it sounds like crap. At least for my ears, it takes away the definition of your playing and everything. So I set up the amplifier and the chorus, of course, in a way that this amplifier has a very thin signal. This is enough to create this wonderful, uh, spacey environment and everything while maintaining the definition of your playing. That's the thing. And of course, when I now use a distorted sound, I, the same is true. I maintain the definition of my playing. You remember, when I put the chorus directly into the amplifier, in one amplifier, in a mono setup, uh, it sounds harsh um, and um, yeah, the definition is going away from, from your playing. It's wow, wow. But in a stereo amping setup, like here, uh, yeah, let me just play something distorted, a few chords. You heard it? I mean, attack is defined and I have a wonderful wide chorus sound. I love stereo amp setups, so if you have two amplifiers at home, try that out. And uh, also a information uh, regard, I said I have this three ingredients, my tube amplifier, my delay and the chorus. And the delay, I don't have a certain stomp box or something, I only need a delay. Uh, I also you can use a plugin. The only thing important for me is the delay time. It must be, I'm programmed to that 446, 446 milliseconds. That's the mic burn delay time. 99% of my time I use this delay time and I adapt also to slower songs or faster songs where other people say it must be exactly that delay for this tempo of the song. No, I use 446. Only in experimental cases or where it is really appropriate, I use um, a different number. So the secret is also out if somebody is interested. Many people asked, so I want to give here detailed uh, information for you. And of course, uh, in this delay, it is important that the high frequencies and the low frequencies are cut. So the low frequencies should be cut at around 120 to 140 hertz and the high frequencies uh, around 6 kilohertz sometimes seven, sometimes six. Uh, that's around, that's it. And a little bit feedback of the delay, no? three to four repetitions. Before I babble too much, of course I have prepared a playback 
and um, yeah, it's a very popular song of mine, so I have no copyright problems. It's a shortened version just to show you what a chorus is doing when you play a few simple chords with your guitar. Have fun! <laughs> So I hope you heard how wonderful a chorus can sound, isn't it? How, how it can spice up your sound, um, increase your stereo bass and everything. Uh, yeah, you can become addicted very quick. And that's the key to the use of a chorus. Don't use it always. Use it wisely. Um, by the way, um, the guitar I'm using here is proof that a very old lady can sound also very happy with the chorus, isn't it? Um, it's the right time to say a huge thank you to a very good friend of mine who was so nice to lend me this guitar from his collection for today. So, I hope that you like what you heard, that you understand a little bit better what a chorus is doing. Um, you know, I wanted to keep it general and um, yeah, this being said, I'm at the end of my little guitar demo for today. So, have fun experimenting with the chorus stomp boxes do whatever it takes and uh, yeah have a nice summer bye bye see you next time <laughs>